Hi, my name is Lavinia and this is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy. Today, I'm excited to teach you and give you some tips on how to play Wondrous Creatures, designed by C.W. Yo and published by Bad Comet. I want to give a big thank you to the publisher for sending me a copy. I haven't stopped playing since I got it. Wondrous Creatures is absolutely gorgeous and I love the mechanics of the game. It has a beautiful rhythm and it completely immerses you in its world. In this one to four player game, you play a creature enthusiast seeking to assemble the world's leading creature reserve. You send your crew to collect resources or cards. You activate special effects to unleash your very own powerful combos. You collect and combine hundreds of different creature cards, each with a distinct ability of a wondrous creature. As you progress through the game, your reserve gains new abilities and you get more powerful. The goal is to score the most points by creating the most harmonious reserve of wondrous creatures and completing achievements faster than the other players. To set up the game, you start by placing the main board in the center of the table and Peter on it. The main board is double-sided with one side for one to two players and the other for three to four players. Today I'll set up for three players as shown in the compass here. Place the supply board next to it here, shuffle all the wondrous creatures cards, deal six of them face up here, that's called the wilderness. Keep the other face down here. Then you separate these super cute eggs. All eggs are double-sided, one side hatched and the other unhatched. There are seven types of eggs, one for each species. The red crab is for crustaceans, monkeys are mammals. These are for reptiles. And then there are birds, dragons, fish, and insects. Take five of each of the seven types of eggs and place these 35 into the egg pouch and keep it nearby. Place the energy and net tokens here, then you set up the time track. For a four player game, you add this overlay, but otherwise you use the one on the board. Randomly pick one time token. Match its symbol with those on the map of the island. On this triangle, you place eggs you take from the bag, one at a time. Repeat with a new time token. In these circles, shuffle these two time tokens and place them face down on the rightmost yellow circles of the time track. Randomly place another two time tokens face down on the remaining yellow circle spaces. Finish by placing the hourglass time tracker on the first space of the track. Shuffle the 14 habitat tiles and place them here face down. Draw the top three and place them face up here. Place the trophies here. For a three player game, place 14 trophies. Let's place the achievements you will use in this game. Separate the achievement cards in three stacks, brown, yellow and turquoise. Randomly pick three browns and place them here. The side face up matches the number of boxes shown on the brown spaces here. Now randomly pick two yellow cards. You must have four different species on the two cards. If your second card has some species already on the previous achievement, discard it and draw a new one. Then check the turquoise cards and discard the four species already on the board. Of the three cards left, randomly pick two and place them on the board here. Let me show you how you finish the setup. Each player picks one of the four colors. Take the corresponding player board. It represents your character in the game. On the left here, you place your six achievement markers. Place your resource markers here. For now, you have one fruit, one coral, one flower, and one mushroom. Take your corresponding three crew members and keep them near your player board. Also pick one butterfly net and keep it nearby. Randomly distribute eight creature cards to each player from the top of the deck. You need to keep four of those. There are five main types of wondrous creature cards, all with effects described at the bottom of the card. Those brown ones with the lightning have an immediate effect. The purple ones give you energy you can use later as free actions. The yellow ones have powers you activate when you recharge. Red ones give you points at the end of the game. And turquoise cards have ongoing effect. The cards you keep depend on the cards themselves and on your strategy. Maybe you prefer to score animal achievements first, or maybe you want to build up your engine first. When you're ready, discard the four cards face up on the discard area. Randomly give two captains to each player. Each captain has unique ability, which will be unlocked later in the game. There are nine captains in the base game. You can see their detailed descriptions on pages 27 and 28 of the rules. Pick the captain you prefer. Put it here face up on your player board and take its corresponding meeple. Finally, place a lock token of your color on your captain. As per the rules, the player who has befriended the most unusual animal will be first. 
or you can draw randomly. After that, in clockwise order, the second player adds one resource on the player board and the third player adds two resources. Move any resource tracker one space to the right. You can gain the same resource twice if you want. In the game, you will use resources to play cards into your reserve. Check the left side of the card to see what resource you need more of. Now that everything's set up, take the player aid and you are ready to start your adventure in Wondrous Creatures. On your turn, you must perform one of four standard actions, and you may also take two free actions as many times as you want. I'll start by explaining the first standard action, placing one of your crew members on the map of the island. Your crew member occupies two hexes, and you follow the placement rules shown here. You can place your crew on plains hexes for free, but if you want to place it on mountain hexes, you must pay any one resource. Even if you place it on two mountains, you still only pay one resource. And you can never place it on a lake, a resource, or a hex already occupied. You can place your crew on top of an egg. In this case, you collect it. You place the eggs you collect on your egg track here and immediately activate the bonus. In this case, you gain one point, which you score immediately on the score track. Also, when you place a crew member adjacent to a habitat, you can gain either the resource or the corresponding creature cards. Just to clarify, the choice between picking up a resource or a creature card is only available through the map. When you obtain resources from cards, the egg track, or special effect icons, you only acquire the resource. There are four types of habitats in Wondrous Creatures, each with its own type of creature and resource. Fruits, corals, flowers, and mushrooms. If you take the resource, move the corresponding resource marker one step to the right. If you're already at six, don't move it. Alternatively, you can pick one creature from the wilderness matching the habitat instead of taking the matching resource. So here, instead of taking one fruit, you can take one creature card from the wilderness with the fruit habitat icon and put it into your hand. You don't place the card face up into your reserve yet. It stays in your hand until you play the second action to play one or two cards. To play a creature card from your hand into your reserve, you must pay its resource cost shown on the left edge of the card. So here, to play Walcher, you must pay one fruit and two corals. Slide the corresponding resource markers to the left. Place the card face up into your reserve. All cards have a small number here. You can see its description in the rule book in pages 28 to 31. I'm going to show you how each type of card gets played. Two out of five types you can activate immediately. First, we have instant cards. They make more than half the creature cards. They have a brown lightning symbol here. You activate their effect as soon as you place them in your reserve. For instance, pick a creature from the deck or pick one from the wilderness, conduct a sweep or discard a card. When you conduct a sweep, discard the three slots on the left of the three slots on the right of the wilderness, no matter how many cards are still there. And then pick one card from anywhere in the wilderness. Keep your instant cards stacked up like this as you won't use their power again, but will need their habitat and species tags. Then you can play an energy card, those with the purple star here. When you do, immediately place on it the number of energy tokens shown on the right edge of the card. As a free action, you can also play one of these energy tokens immediately to activate the card. You can activate several energy cards in one turn. However, you cannot activate the same energy card twice. This will have to be done in later turns. I'll now explain the other three cards as they also uh, all activate later in the game. Continuous cards, those with the turquoise infinity symbol, have ongoing effects that will impact upcoming cards you play or when you pick up or flip eggs or recharge or gain trophies. These recharge cards have a yellow hourglass. They activate during the recharge or whenever you see this icon. With them, you get more resources, cards, eggs or points. Finally, the end cards with the red bell, giving your victory points at the end of the game or when you see this icon. Throughout the game, when you see these red seal points, they score at the end of the game. The brown seal points are scored during the game. Keep track of them when collecting eggs or activating creatures. Also, when you reach certain points on the score track, you get bonuses. These are scored by each player as soon as they reach that point. Here, collect one extra net. If you already have three, either use one or score one point. This one gives you a discovery icon 
pick one of the three shown here and place it on a lake on the map. If there's an egg on it, collect it immediately and add it to your egg track. As usual, collect the egg bonus immediately. Either points or take a card from the wilderness or one resource of your choice. If your egg track is full, you score two points. You discard that extra egg back to the box, not in the supply. It's important as if you run out of a certain type of egg, you can't collect it anymore. Another important point is that even if you place the discovery tile near one of your crew, you don't collect the resource from the tile. However, you can activate its bonus with a net. And of course, it's now a new location to collect resource from later on. Finally, replenish the supply by flipping the topmost token here. The third bonus you can collect is a trophy. Simply take it from the supply and place it near your player board. Now, I'll show you the third action and how you can complete achievements. These will give you a lot of points at the end of the game. You can claim those as an action if you meet the requirements. If you claim a main achievement, you claim the topmost available slot. There are five different main achievements and you can claim them as soon as you have the required set in your reserve. For these, you need to have 14 or more cards in your reserve. Here you need at least eight unhatched eggs. You hatch all those you use. For this one, you need six or more creatures with the same habitat. With this one, you need at least 10 creatures of the same species, including unhatched eggs, which you then hatch. And finally, with this one, you need at least two cards of each type in your reserve. To claim an achievement, use one of your achievement markers from your player board and claim its corresponding bonus. Here you collect two of the same or two different resources. Here you take two cards from the wilderness. Here you score three points. Here you add one net to your supply. With this one, you restore one energy card from your reserve to its full energy limit. Wait until you have an energy card in your reserve or this reward will have no effect. The last one is the same. You need recharge cards in your reserve to benefit from it. With this one, you activate all the recharge cards in your reserve in your preferred order. It's very powerful. You can also claim these single species achievements if you have three or six of the required species in your reserve. Count the tags you have on the top left corner of your cards. You can also use eggs from your reserve. If you do, flip them to the hatch side. Finally, you can claim multi-species achievements. Like for the single species achievements, you can use either unhatched eggs or the species tag from your reserve. You can fulfill the achievement with only one of the two or both of them in any combination. Remember that you can only claim each achievement once. As soon as you claim your first achievement, you activate your captain. Place its meeple on the corresponding crew so that when you use this crew, you can activate your captain's ability. Also, you can still claim achievements even if there's no more trophies to collect. In addition to the actions you can take only once per turn, there's another free action you can take anytime using a net. You can use it as soon as you place a new crew member on the board or from a crew member that you'd place earlier. With the net, you don't activate the habitat itself, but the special effect on the habitat. With these, you can flip eggs. These activate one recharge card. These let you play a card without using an action. Sometimes it is also a resource. And with this one, you gain three victory points. For more details on habitat special effects, you can check the back page of the rulebook. While you can play more than one net in a row, you cannot use them to activate the same exact location more than once. I'll now show you the fourth action, how you can recharge. You can only do this if all three of your crew members are on the map and you don't want to take any new action. You start by returning all your crew members near your player board. Do not touch the other player's crew members. Then advance the time tracker one space and collect a butterfly net from the supply. If there's a full sweep, replace all the cards in the wilderness, but do not take one. If there's a time token on the advanced space, flip it over to see where you place eggs on the map. Take those eggs randomly from the supply bag. If you are at the end of the track and can't move anymore, you still collect one net, but also remove one trophy from the board. You do not take it. Then you discard down to five cards in your hand. During the game, you can hold as many cards as you want in your hand. But during a recharge action, you cannot keep more than five cards and must discard the others. If you have cards like this one, you score bonus points. Then you activate all your recharge cards. For instance, collect resources or flip eggs. When you're done with your action or free actions, 
it's the turn of the player on your left. If there are any empty spaces in the wilderness, refill them completely before the next player starts their turn. If the deck is empty, shuffle the discard pile to form a new deck. When the last trophy is removed from the main board, you start the last round of the game, so keep an eye on your strategy as you progress. If you take the last trophy, you trigger the end of the game. You complete your turn, then all the other players complete one more turn in order, and it's time to count points. Add the score of your end of game cards to your brown points, so 30 plus 14, 44, then add up all the red points from all the cards in your reserve, plus 32 points, that's 76 points. Use one of these 50 tokens to keep track. Add all the points from the achievements you've scored, plus 60 points, 136. Flip the 50 point token. Add three points for each trophy you have, 15 points, 149. Finally, add a point for sets of four nets and resources, nine of them, so two points, or a total of 151 points. In case of a tie, the player with more trophies wins. If there's still a tie, they can share the victory. My tips to win at Wondrous Creatures are start by focusing on cards that build your engine first, like recharge cards, then look at the species you can achieve. It's a faster game than you think. You need to be super efficient right from the get-go. Even if they are not from a species you need, take eggs when you can as they accelerate your engine and also give you points. It's well worth taking a lower achievement just to unlock the captain early. Be mindful of your hand size and of your resources before you recharge. It's a shame to discard too many cards or not gain all the resources you can gain. As all players get their engines running, the game accelerates really, really quickly towards the end. And that's how you play Wondrous Creatures. It's a fantastic game that will get you wanting to play again as soon as you're done playing your first game. And the better you get at it, the faster it plays, so you can play a lot of it. If you find this video helpful, please give it a like. And if you're interested in learning more board games, consider subscribing and clicking the bell to get notified when I post new videos. It's a great way to stay updated on the games I teach and it helps support the channel. Thank you. I started making videos back in 2020 and it's been an amazing experience learning so many skills to make this channel possible. It's grown beyond my expectations, but now I want to grow it even more. And for that, I need your help. I have a Patreon page that allows your support on a monthly basis and a Buy Me A Coffee where you can support me as a one-off. The links are in the video description. If you are able and willing to contribute, I'd be really grateful. If there's a game you would like me to teach, let me know in the comments and I'll definitely check it out. We will make more games easy soon. Bye now.